Hi everybody, it's Rob Schlankter again from MRCC and we're really thrilled to be uh, into our next member spotlight. And uh, this uh, session in particular is um, very interesting with regard to uh, what uh, is happening with the planet and how energy and sustainability are becoming more and more critical to both business uh, industry as well as the communities. And we happen to have a great cross-section of members that are going to come today to talk a little bit about how they've been working to uh, help uh, businesses uh, and communities uh, really leverage the impact of future sustainability efforts as well as how to take advantage of some of the energy opportunities that are out there. And I'm thrilled to be welcoming our first guest, who is Lisa Wilk. Uh, Wilk, the CEO of Capaccio Engineering, and sustainability is really a key focus. I want to start out by saying congratulations on 30 years yeah, of doing this. Yeah, we're very excited. That's uh, that's year, spectacular. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to get started and you know have um, you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing those 30 years <laughs> and how yeah, it's changed. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about. Sure. The yeah. Yeah. So we were. Founded in 1992 and um, actually started out in Sudbury, but then in 2003 moved to Marlboro, and we've been here ever since. And our mission as a company has always been to help industry and the environment prosper. And um, we've always thought the two should be together and um, and not one at the expense of the other. And and it's been exciting for us to see this whole concept evolve in the public consciousness where sustainability is, you know, people talk about it now all the time. And But we, we not only believe that the environment can be sustainable and the business can be sustainable, but we actually think if they're aligned and integrated, that they can both thrive and prosper, you know. Yeah, I, th I thought a great quote that I you know, read on your website, the health of the planet and profits need to be approached as a singular ambition. I, I, that's definitely what we believe, you know, and, um, and, you know, like one example of that, um, you know, oftentimes we think of, you know, we all want to save water, we want to save energy, you know, materials and all these different things. And, um, and we often think these are small incremental changes that a business might do, um, but they can be integral to the business. We, we have, um, one of our clients was able to double the production with the same amount of water. And when you look at that, that's a huge environmental achievement, but it's also a business achievement. They, they didn't have to move and relocate. Um, employees didn't lose, the, lose their jobs. There was no delay in production. And so that's a, that's a real business achievement as well as an environmental achievement. And so that's an example of where the two can go together. And, right. You know. So when you focus on sustainability for um, members and uh, the community watching, yeah, tell us a little bit about when you would decide to bring you in. What do you do that can help them really take advantage and be you know compliant with what we're after from a sustainability perspective? Yeah, yeah. So um, what we usually start with is something called a materiality assessment, and what that does is look at your business, your operation, who your stakeholders are, your external stakeholders, you know, it could be investors, it could be customers, um, it could be regulatory agents, it, um, and also internal, your, your employees um, and different stakeholders. We look at who they all are, and then we um, assess what does your business do and, and what are your impacts and where can you make the most difference and what is technologically and economically feasible and, and try to combine all those and align so that what you're focusing on makes sense for your company. You know, oftentimes, so you might hear in the paper about climate change and, you know, we've had companies sometimes come to us and say, everyone's talking about greenhouse gases. Should we have a greenhouse gas target? And and they may have very little contribution to greenhouse gases, and so that might not be the appropriate goal for them. Or they may have a big contribution, but doing a, a material 
materiality assessment is a way to figure out you know, what should we focus on. Right. So know, it sounds to, a lot like a partnership of aligning yeah. goals with the organizations yeah. that are interested in leveraging sustainability yeah, activities. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, once you establish those goals, um, you have to come up with how are you going to achieve them and, and how are you going to measure and monitor them and, um, you know, so that you know if you need to change direction and adjust to be able to meet that huge target that you just set. Um, but also being able to partner with other businesses. Um, you know, there's other, uh, I think you're going to be speaking with a few others from the community today that can help and um, and really working together to, to approach the challenge. Yeah, so, you know, I, so I think it's fascinating. Tell us just real quickly, how has it changed in 30 years? So back when you started, yeah. the attitude and the opinions and the consciousness of sustainability, what has it evolved? Yeah, oh, it's it's amazing the transformation. Um, you know, when, when we first started, um, it was sort of a necessary evil to address these uh, environmental challenges or safety challenges. And, um, you know, it's primarily regulatory driven, you know, and, uh, you know, we have to do this and it's a necessary cost. And it wasn't, it wasn't really aligned with the business. And in, in general, in the public consciousness, people didn't even think about it. Maybe they thought of environment of things, uh, you know, litter. Don't, <laughs> remember the old, right. uh, what was it, don't give a hoot, don't pollute, that kind right. of thing. Um, but, um, but it's gradually evolved and, um, you know, and even around the country, at first it was cleaning up hazardous waste sites. And then people looked into, well, where, how did they get here to begin with? And, and, you know, and how can we minimize generating all these waste and how can we prevent this pollution to begin with? And there was this gradual shift and transition and, um, and even, you know, a few years back I, I was um, invited as a guest speaker at this um, college course and I, I would speak on um, environmental and I remember when I first started people were looking very confused like why would you do all these things and, and, um, and now if I go into that same classroom, it would be, of course, we have to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's a huge transition. And, and um, you know, to me, it's very exciting that everyone is so interested in uh, sustainability, but it's also an opportunity um, to really accomplish something, you right. know, and I, that's exciting, you know. Good. So, so you're, you've been a very active member uh, in the Chamber of Commerce. So, you know, with uh, talking to the members and educating them, what what would you leave them with in terms of getting in touch with you and engaging in uh, your work? Yeah, yeah. So, um, like you said, we try to be active, and the chamber has been fantastic. We with the uh, business roundtables, and uh, there, we've had a few roundtables on sustainability mm -hmm. and spoken at those. And um, and you know, if, if we're based right here in Marlboro on over on Donald Lynch Boulevard and our website, you know, uh, www.capacio.com. Mm -hmm. But um, but if they were to get in touch with us, we would probably want to speak with them about what they see as their challenges and, um, you know, share our insights. And um, if there is a way that we can help them, certainly we would be, you know, offer to help them. If, if there's someone that we can refer them to that we think would be better aligned, we would do that as well. But, um, you know, we what we've been doing a lot of lately is um, trying to establish programs and show how they will meet these targets. Because many companies, very large companies, have set these audacious goals, but the suppliers to those companies also have to contribute to those goals. And so whether you're a small or medium or large company, right. um, and right. so helping them um, look at their situation, measure their baseline metrics, establish programs, really create a roadmap of how we're going to get there. Great. You know, so. Well, we want to thank you for coming on and sharing that, a very, very important issue facing businesses. Yeah. Um, and, you know, wish you continued success. And again, congratulations on 30 years. Thank you. To Lisa yeah. from yeah. Capaccio Engineering. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for um, having me here. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 
My next guest uh, to join us for this uh, very important segment happens to be uh, Bob Moran with National Grid. So we got one of the heavy hitters <laughs> coming in today. And Bob, welcome. And Hi, thank Rob. you for taking the time uh, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, manager of Community Relations and Customer Management. So I'm sure you have a frontline view. And I, do. I wanted to start out because I, I think a lot of people, when they think of a company as big as National Grid, um, lose sight for how much work is really being done in the local communities. So tell us a little bit about the mission and what it is that National Grid is focused on as energy becomes a more important resource. Sure. So, of course, National Grid is a very large uh, electric and gas utility serving about 6 million customers in Mass and New York, and then a few million in the U.K. as well, a big presence in the U.K., mm -hmm actually headquartered there. Um, but aside from being a big company serving a lot of customers, we're also a local company. We have a lot of presence locally and folks that do a role similar to what I do as community relations. So I have a number of communities, about 10 communities in the Blackstone Valley and the, the boroughs area where I serve as a primary point of contact for municipal officials, city hall, town hall, mm -hmm. fire and police, school departments, um, and I help those customers as they deal with construction, service, permitting, billing, street lights, any of the issues that, that come up that are, that are really local issues. Um, I also help um, a small segment of very large industrial customers, hospitals, Gillette Stadium, Raytheon, customers like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we do participate a little bit in the energy efficiency uh, which is a big part of where we see the energy industry pivoting to over the next few decades. Okay. How, how uh, you know, what would you say is like the biggest misconception that people have? So I imagine the biggest thing you hear is when the power goes out. Mm -hmm. But aside from that in trying to help customers be more energy efficient, what, what's available from National Grid that people may not know? Well, I don't want to overlook the energy efficiency programs. We do offer nation-leading, very high-quality energy efficiency programs. And if, if a customer is out there that maybe participated in these years ago, I would say revisit it. Call us again. Let's see what's changed. Obviously, um, lighting technology, we noticed the, the LED lighting around the studio here. Um, LED technology has changed a lot. There are new heating and cooling strategies, industrial processes. There are a lot of measures that um, we can revisit that maybe were looked at previously. Um, so I definitely don't want to overlook the opportunity of those energy efficiency programs. Mm -hmm. um, we also, um, I think National Grid has taken a bold step of putting forward a, a vision for a fossil-free um, energy delivery system. It includes renewable natural gas, um, renewable energy, targeted electrification, network geothermal, and a real emphasis on energy efficiency in buildings. So we see that as the, the pivot for the energy industry to move away from fossil fuel within the energy delivery system. So for members who may be tuning in that know their customers of National Grid, mm -hmm. what, what steps should they take in order to in, in explore what it is that you just talked about and how they may be able to take yeah, advantage? Contact us um, through our call center or there are a number of energy efficiency um, phone numbers and, and websites available through nationalgridus.com. Okay. Um, get those energy assessments done and implement the measures and and also pick the brains of the folks that are coming out to talk to the businesses see what they might suggest for um, you know alternatives we we certainly want to encourage any any move towards full electrification or um, electrification of transport there's a lot of news around electric vehicles um, we, we have incentives that help customers implement those. I mean, those charging systems can be a lot of, uh, a lot of investment mm -hmm. to build a charging system suitable for, you know, for a fleet of delivery vehicles, right. say. But if a customer approaches us with that, we can, we can help. We can offer some incentives. And, you know, it's good for the environment. It's, it's good for National Grid. It, it's good for um, our general move towards uh, 
less carbon intensive ways of heating and transportation. Good. And what would you think is the biggest misconception about energy and sustainability from the business perspective that you find? The biggest misconception? Yeah. Is it, uh, you know, like, is it, you get the sense that people think it's just so big and un, you know, unattainable. Uh, you know, what, what, what advice would you give them? Maybe, on maybe a misconception is that what an individual or a single business does doesn't have an impact. Okay. Um, I think that an individual can have an impact uh, and a business can have an impact. And, and really, it has to be all of us working towards uh, a more sustainable and more energy efficient economy, energy delivery system. Um, you know, our vision is really to be 100% fossil free by 2050. I mean, it's going to take a lot of steps to get there, um, but you can you can act now. You can reduce your own energy. You can commit to you know finding alternative ways to heat buildings. Heating is a big heating is a big source of um, greenhouse gas emissions. Mm -hmm. In in New England, it accounts for almost forty wow. percent of, of the emissions. So maybe that is a misconception. They, heating certainly accounts for a lot of of the emissions and the energy use. And if we can get folks to begin the process of converting to even hybrid gas and electric heating systems, heat pumps, um, and electric heat, uh, we think that's a step in the right direction. Great. Well, yeah. I will say that National Grid has been very active in the larger uh, biotech companies and mm -hmm. chamber members being part of discussions to see what they're leveraging and what best demonstrated practices can be shared. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to uh, thank you for that. And, you know, please, National Grid is a, a very active member in the chamber. If you'd like any more information, um, certainly Bob is a great conduit. But uh, we wanted to thank you for your partnership and your membership Happy and appreciate it. you coming on board today. Enjoy the membership of right. the chamber. Great thank to you, see Bob. you. You too. Well, I am thrilled to welcome our next guest, who was kind enough even to bring their own props uh, from uh, Fuse Energy, beautiful cup, uh, Steve Janes, thanks so much. Steve is founding partner of Fuse Energy, and uh, we're thrilled to get some local perspective uh, you know, on how companies like yours are really helping businesses to uh, grapple with the challenges of energy and uh, sustainability efforts. So uh, obviously a newer member to the chamber um, most recently, but uh, you and your partner Tom have become very actively involved. So just take us through a little bit about Fuse's mission and what you've been up to. Well, first of all, thanks for having us here this morning, Rob. And Pleasure. Glad to see the uh, famous Fuse Front Energy and Red Tumbler. There. Look at that. <laughs> it's gotten a lot of uh, a lot of mileage this summer all over all over the world. It seems like. Great. Uh, so um, yeah, good good to be here. As you mentioned, we're we're very new members of the chamber, but um, my partner Tom has really been uh, been uh, instrumental in getting us into the fold here, and and and, the, and we have a fairly large client base in the area. So uh, excellent. So glad. Glad to be here and glad to be members of, of the chamber. Um, at Fuse Energy, um, we are Massachusetts based, obviously, and um, we work nationwide, but the core of our, our business is in central New England. We're uh, commercial energy advisors, and a big part of that is, um, is procurement of energy like electricity and natural gas for our commercial customers who work with small businesses, larger CNI, municipalities, school districts, uh, houses of worship, nonprofits, you name it, everybody under the sun. Um, but um, it's securing low rates for our clients, and a big part of that is um, is focused on sustainability and, and renewable energy. Okay. Um, we work with uh, the state. We work with the local utilities, National Grid, Eversource, Unitil in the state of Massachusetts mm -hmm. um, to um, uh, involve our clients in these energy efficiency and, and energy savings programs. So for our members, uh, you know, watching businesses of all different sizes, just Take us through. Take us through exactly. You know what would happen if Fuse would come in to consult. 
So I'll, I'll give you a good uh, uh, local example. As I was driving this morning, I passed a long-standing client of ours, Main Street Bank, okay. uh, right down the street. Um, so Main Street Bank is uh, an energy procurement client of ours. So mm-hmm. we broker their uh, electricity and natural gas supply. So instead of, you'll, they're with the local utilities, of course, for, for both um, commodities, electricity and natural gas. But we can go to our third party direct suppliers of, of either commodity, in mm-hmm. Main Street Bank's case, they're, they're, they use us for, for both electricity and natural gas supply. And we can source long term, low fixed rates of those two commodities so you're not beholden to this crazy energy market that we're in today, for example. I mean, most people know that you just go to the pump. I mean, you, right. you know where we are with, with energy these days and the geopolitical mess that's going on in uh, Russia and Ukraine, mm-hmm. um, the pandemic, the deep freeze in Texas last year. I mean, numerous events that have gotten us to where we right. are today and inflation creeping up uh, on us as well. But um, no, back to back to the local example, Main Street Bank, um, they work with us as far as their uh, uh, electricity and natural gas uh, supply is concerned. And we get them into, like I said, low, fixed, long-term rates. So they're not paying 50 cents per therm one month and then a dollar per therm the next. It's an insurance policy to make sure that they're, that they're not getting I don't want to say gouge because it's not the local utilities fault mm-hmm. at all, mm-hmm. but but they could be susceptible to, you know, vast and very kind of uh, uh, violent energy, energy swings. Um, sustainability wise and renewable energy wise, we have them enrolled in, in the state community solar program, mm-hmm. whereby they subscribe to shares of a local solar farm and receive credits on their monthly electric bill just by subscribing to the program. These are large scale utility scale solar farms that our solar developer partners mm-hmm. uh, have built um, throughout the throughout the state and in all three of our public utility uh, territories and um, wonderful program that the Department of Energy Resources and, and Public Utilities Commission um, have developed this is the current program is called smart solar Massachusetts renewable target um, we have a, a again wildly successful program uh, residents of the state business owners again municipalities school districts all can enroll in this program um, no heavy lifting no no subscription fees just enroll in the program and receive receive credits on your monthly electric bill also helping to develop clean energy for the state at no cost to you so it's, it's really a win win for for the off taker or subscriber to the to the community solar program gotcha gotcha so it sounds like there's a lot of savings mm-hmm. uh potentially uh in having you come in and do assessments so what prevents more companies from wanting to explore and take advantage of that what do you think the common misperception is about taking a look at the impact that you can have on energy and sustainability? Um, I don't I don't think um, there's kind of any negative connotation uh, as far as I know uh, when it when it comes to that. Um, I think if you're you know a large enough corporation you, you see sustainability directors, renewable energy directors. We recently had a conversation with a with a um, a large scale uh, um, nationwide uh, client a couple of days ago, and um, they have their own sustainability mm-hmm. and renewable energy mm-hmm. uh, directors in place. Um, most of us are, aren't at that level where we can't, you know, we can't afford uh, the luxury of having um, uh, someone in th- in that role full time. But then you'd come to somebody like us, somebody like like Fuse Energy, um, where at no cost to them, uh, you know, we're brokers, we're advisors. Um, we don't charge our customers for the consulting that we do, we just make them aware of the programs that are available, energy efficiency programs, the energy savings programs, and typically, again, it's no cost to the customer. Mm -hmm. Um, I think now more than ever, going back to to the point of your question, um, uh, customers, our commercial clients are even more aware that that this is something that they need to do today. Um, the, the the volatility in the market is just is just too extreme. You can't you don't have to be an energy expert to know that 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 mm-hmm. the market is, has been turned upside down. Um, again, go to the pump, pay your electric bill, pay right. your natural gas bill, propane. It's um, it's a volatile market, and mm-hmm. and you need to be aware of what's going on. You need that insurance policy again, so you're not paying one rate 
one month and then 100 percent more the next month and i'm not exaggerating when i say 100 percent right. more it's that it's almost those like are the locking switch. in on a future oil contract and not being uh, susceptible to wild swings exactly exactly okay. and, and that's the analogy that we we'll use mm-hmm. it's 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 two years ago if i had said rob i can lock you in at the pump at uh, 250 a gallon for the next three years would you mm-hmm. have done it some people would say yes, some mm-hmm. people would say no, but it's that insurance policy. Today, right. in hindsight, of course, you would have said yes. Yeah. But that's why I don't play the stock market that, either, That's so, exactly, yeah. right. exactly so, right. So, um, Steve, you have an opportunity here with our you know, membership uh, tuning in. What, what counsel and advice would you give to members when it comes to taking you know, advantage, or what would you recommend in terms of how they should go about taking a look at Uh, these types of programs you're talking about? Well, like I said, I mean, you know, most of us are are not at the level where we can have, you know, full-time advisors, council uh, positions in the sustainability and renewable energy and just energy world. Uh, I would say talk to uh, an experienced energy advisor, Mm -hmm. um, a a consultant who can make you aware of these these programs. A lot of it is awareness or lack thereof that, uh, again, most people, most business owners are aware that you can lock in rates, that you can go to a third party party, direct supplier of electricity and natural gas. Some take advantage, some don't. Um, Have that conversation with an energy advisor. Uh, Talk to them about what's available in in the market. The state of Massachusetts is one of the leading states of solar energy in the country. And and most residents don't know that. Um, Maybe you could say they don't do a very good job of marketing that, but but the fact of the matter is we're ahead of Texas, we're ahead of Arizona, we're ahead of California, all those states you would think would be the obvious choices for renewable energy and solar development. We are at the forefront, and the programs have been developed for for uh, customers, for off takers to take take advantage. The national grids, the ever sources, the unitils of the world, they mm-hmm. want you to p- participate in this program. Right. They are active players. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's be, interesting you brought that up. Yeah. I saw that on the site. So being number one, that means there's a ton of funding available, correct? Correct. Yep. Correct. There, there, there is. Yeah. We focus at Fuse Energy on the larger scale community solar programs, gotcha. again, whereby you subscribe to shares of a local solar farm utility scale five Mm -hmm. ten megawatt farm of course there's funding available and subsidies for the smaller solar arrays individual solar arrays uh, on on your rooftop our focus is the is the virtual net we call it virtual net metering there's no installation at your location there's no uh, buy-in there's there's no ownership there's no insurance you're just subscribing to kilowatt shares of a local farm within your utility territory and you're safe and you're safe so it seems to make sense that uh, for those of us looking to reduce costs, become more efficient, and have a, a say in sustainability efforts for the future, um, you can see by the amount of energy companies we have as part of the chamber, it's a growing concern, uh, obviously, as the planet warms um, and the challenges you spoke about. So we really do appreciate you coming on board and educating us a little bit. And you'll see information if you want to get in touch with uh, any of the Uh, companies that you've seen today so steve we want to thank you very much for joining us and appreciate the uh marketing material as well (laughs) Uh, keeps the coffee hot thank you rob my pleasure to see you good to see you coming on board all right so continuing along with this uh, critical focus on energy and sustainability uh, chamber very very committed to that cause and uh, our next guest is frank collins a uh, long long standing member of the chamber of commerce um, and also has been building trust energy solutions over how many years now frank eight years now eight years congratulations on that welcome thank uh, to you the show we're gl- glad to have you so For people who don't really know what you do, tell us a little bit about uh, Trust Energy's mission and vision. Sure. Uh, I would say to frame it up, uh, 20 years ago, uh, energy efficiency, uh, sustainability, these weren't really mainstream topics. Today, they definitely are, right? Um, What we're seeing is that I, I, for example, have two 25-year-old daughters, and I can tell you that they are very vested in these topics like climate change and sustainability and longer term mm-hmm. thinking 
for old folks like us, uh, sorry, Rob, to include you in that, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, these topics are more learned behavior, but for these kids, uh, it's in their DNA. Right. So at the same time, what we're seeing is that uh, energy prices are surging everywhere. And this was happening even before the whole Ukraine thing mm -hmm. uh, came up. So uh, even before Ukraine, we, what we saw was that uh, energy prices were going up about 70% in the prior five years. And uh, 70? 70%. Wow. And in this last year alone, we've seen uh, energy prices surge by over 30%. And they're expecting this trend to continue. So I think for businesses that uh, are looking to increase their efforts in the sustainability area, uh, there's three main things that they need to be thinking about. And number one is that 60%, 60% of all consumers say that they are willing to pay more for product or service that comes from a business that they consider to be socially responsible. 75% of all millennials say they'll take less money to work for a company that they believe to be socially responsible. So, and we're also seeing that uh, sustainability is becoming a bigger factor when bidding on contracts. We're seeing it tickling 10 to 15% of the total decision criteria. So mm -hmm. having a plan is increasingly important if you're bidding on contracts. Our mission at Trust Energy Solutions is simple. We help businesses and towns meet these challenges by managing their buildings and energy spend in a socially responsible manner. And the best part is that uh, the solutions pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the biggest challenge facing companies when it comes to wanting to really evaluate and kind of get into the mainstream of sustainability? That's a great question. So the challenge we have in New England is that we have no natural resources. So we have to import expensive fossil fuels to generate our our electricity. Um, you add to that that the uh, that the electric grid and the gas pipelines coming into New England are over capacity. The region's growing faster than they can build new substations. So uh, I don't know if you live here in Marlboro, you might have noticed a couple of days ago when it was so hot mm -hmm. that uh, they had brownouts. In fact, there were brownouts throughout the whole state because what's happening is everybody's turning on their AC at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the utilities are putting a lot of focus on on uh, energy efficiency and ways to reduce usage because they can't keep up with demand. Right. So uh, as an aside, uh, a few years ago, I helped the chamber uh, create this thing called a large employer roundtable where we brought in the region's largest employers and we talked to them about uh, what was on their mind. The idea was for them to share ideas and brainstorm solutions. And consistently, uh, the number one topic that they kept bringing up was that they couldn't hire, can't hire, can't hire. And in particular, trying to hire younger talent right. that lives in Boston, and how do you get them to come out to the burbs? Mm -hmm. So uh, in my opinion, one of the primary reasons uh, you wanna include sustainability and energy management and such is so that you can hire those uh, folks that live in Boston come out here to the burbs and uh, they're focused on sustainability they like that in companies that's right? exactly right mm -hmm. and if you and once you go green it gives you a, a, a way to talk about the fact that you're a company that cares right so you've been at this for eight years now Frank you obviously have watched the business grow um, you have a, you know a, a audience now of chamber businesses what advice and counsel would you give them with regard to having companies like yours come in and consult and really get after how to you know go after savings? Sure. How much time do we have? No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Look, there's there's a lot of uncertainty around going sustainable. I talk with business owners all the time, and uh, it seems like this big gnarly ball of mm -hmm. yarn that they just don't know even where to start so they put it off right. when in fact there's a lot of low-hanging fruit kind of things that they can do uh to get the ball rolling um and sustainability is a very large topic for us we focus on energy use mm -hmm. that's our piece of the pie so our goal is to help these companies reduce their energy use and their energy spend so we do this three 
primary ways. Uh, we focus a lot on energy efficiency. So for example, we'll come into a building or a city hall and we'll convert all the old lighting to LED lighting, add some intelligent uh, building controls, and uh, we get free rebates to help pay for all of it and free financing. Um, and so it's just an excellent way to get rid of all those bulbs and ballast issues and when we're done uh the site just looks fantastic customers and and employees especially just love it so number two is energy supply contracts uh what we're seeing is with the energy prices just spiking up and down it's wreaking havoc on uh budgets uh, uh electricity and natural gas energy prices are usually the third largest spend for most businesses after payroll and rent and uh, so with a fixed rate contract, which you can, you can set it up to five years, uh, same price, predictability, right? Mm -hmm. And then last, uh, we're installing electric vehicle charging stations. So this is very exciting. Uh, this year, 5% of all new car sales were electric. In two years, 25% of all vehicles will be, uh, new vehicles will be electric. So um, the, the utilities are incentivizing uh, companies and towns to put these EV charging stations in there. The rebates are huge. Uh, it pays for almost the entire thing. What, what business owners don't understand is that uh, every EV charging, every EV car owner has an app that they look for charging stations, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if I'm trying to decide which hotel to go to or which restaurant to go to, Yours has a charging right. station. Guess where I'm going to go? Right. Right. Yep. So, yep. Uh, I would say that's one of our biggest and hottest trends right now. Great. Well, as you can uh, tell, uh, all the focus on and discussion on energy and sustainability is clearly emerging as we're challenged more as a planet. Uh, so I think uh, this um, segment has been unbelievably rewarding in terms of letting everyone know how many resources are available through the chamber to help you assess and take a look at ways that we can leverage the funding available through the subject matter experts that we have in the chamber. So, uh, Frank, on you know, behalf of the chamber, we want to thank uh, you for taking the time and Trust Energy for lending some expertise and appreciate you being here. Uh, Always good to see you. My pleasure. Thank you okay. for having me.